Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Welcome, I am Ali Upton. This is at UP Fitness Live and this is our live Q&A that we do every single week, have done every single week throughout 2018 to blow through some smoke and mirrors, smash some myths and do whatever else we need to do in these chats. We'll cover a little bit of everything from training, nutrition, supplementation, our own product, and general other things that you may have seen day to day. Cal, hey, what's up? Thank you for commenting on my last video. Um, all sorts of stuff goes on these live chats, so if you haven't tuned in before, then give it a go, ask some questions, don't be shy. If you're one of the regulars, and I can see a lot of the regulars coming in already, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for continually coming back. Light's a bit bright for my eyes today for some reason, but hey ho. Um, some of you may be interested who love my little rants back and forth. I've just posted an IGTV video on my own profile. It's a little bit controversial, but just with regards to the whole Tess Holiday thing, um, the young lady who's recently been on the cover of Cosmopolitan, um, rather large girl. And I think personally, for me, I understand body diversity and, and trying to be happy in your own skin. However, it's irresponsible of uh, various media publications to promote such unhealthy images to the mass market and say that it is okay because do you know what it isn't but go and check that video out if you're curious to know my thoughts on stuff like that right plenty of you coming in so i'm going to scan through these no questions yet but good 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 as always we're recovering we're recovering we're recording this for youtube youtube you are right here if you're watching this on the youtube video this is the second chance to catch up so do leave your comments in the questions box below or the questions in the comments box below rather and i will be sure to try and get back to them answer them if you want to watch it live then go on over to at up fitness live every single wednesday at 8 a.m right what do we got see how the light is there plenty of you coming in alan dublin Tom Carr, Ben Meyer, or Maher, it's one of our own trainers, I believe. So, last week we had a bit of a quiet one. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if you were either getting really, really bored of me or there was something interesting going on. I know there was a uh, Manchester game. My last one was from a hotel in central Manchester, actually. I've um, been doing a few traveling around recently, one in uh, the airport, one in a hotel. Next week, where am I next week? I think I'm here next week, but we shall see. Any tips for a plateau in weight loss? Harry, uh, it depends on why that plateau has occurred. Obviously, it could be a dietary issue. You may need to reduce calories slightly further. You may need to get calories back up higher and spike them. Um, or there could be a training issue. You could have stopped adapting to your training protocol. It could be overtraining. It could be undertraining. There's a million different reasons why you're not getting past that plateau. The best place to assess what you have been doing and see if you can figure out that pattern. It's going to be one of those things. First point of call, I would usually go, rather than trying to take more food away too quickly, See if there's anything you can adapt in your training to elicit a response. And um, if not, then look at your calories. If they're already super, super low, you may want to spike them up. If they're already uh, fairly high, you may want to taper them down a little bit further. Uh, it is intermittent fasting good? This is something that comes up in literally every single one of these chats. I must have discussed this same thing at least 70 times this year. Um, intermittent fasting has its medical uses. It has uses for giving the digestive system a bit of a break, um, various other little bits and bobs. However, from a body composition point of view, from the point of view that most of you are coming to see me for, coming onto these live feeds for, to get fitter whilst getting healthier, whilst getting in shape, intermittent fasting, no, I don't believe is good for that. The only people that really can get away with intermittent fasting are people with an awful lot of muscle to lose. And um, the only time I've ever really seen it be very, very effective are when people are carrying a ton of muscle, they're already relatively lean. And even then, I wouldn't necessarily say that the intermittent fast, maybe they just stretch out the morning until they have breakfast, but it's not, you know, it's not like a 16 hour fast. It's usually like a maybe 12 hour fast at best. So intermittent fasting, I'm not a huge fan of it. It does have its uses for uh, remedial therapy, for getting your body back into a particular place, for helping your digestive system. But when it comes to body composition, I would say no, don't do it. And especially, especially for females, you are much, much, much better off eating far more regularly. Richard Oates, Elliot, what's up, Rich? What's your view on cardio steps doing lean bulking? Absolutely do them. Um, you know, obviously keep them, you don't want to be running a marathon every single day, but by doing steps, what you are doing is aiding recovery, you're improving blood flow, you're keeping your heart working correctly, um, and you're, you're going to keep your joints moving. So absolutely, I 100% say you should be doing it. Loads and loads and loads and loads. What's my opinion on altitude elevation masks for cardio? <laughs> Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, right, these elevation masks, first and foremost, you look like a complete douchebag if you wear one. Um, secondly, 
it, this is my sense of it. Now, I'm no scientist, but I would consider myself relatively intelligent. Do correct me if I'm wrong. Now, what most of these masks decide is that um, there is less oxygen in the air at altitude. Is that correct? I believe that's the theory. There is less oxygen in the air at altitude. Now, by putting a mask on, it does not take oxygen content out of the air that you're breathing in. Okay, so it doesn't actually do what it says it's doing at all. What it does do is restrict the amount of air you can breathe in like you're holding your mouth, your hand in front of your mouth. So for me, the whole logic and science behind them is completely flawed. Not only that, but you look like a bloody douchebag. And third thing, the third thing, which I keep seeing, I actually was training in Crawley recently in Nuffield Health there. On two separate occasions, I saw guys with their fucking stupid mask on doing tricep pushdowns. At least if you are going to do something with one of those masks on, respiratory training, do something that's going to challenge your respiratory system. Don't go in and train your arms with two, three minutes between sets on your phone. You look like a tosser and it's not actually doing anything. So that's kind of my opinion on them. Don't waste your money. Want to train at altitude? Go somewhere high. Uh, Hail Bell, what's the best to eat for breakfast? Depends on your goal, depends on the person, it kind of depends on what you can sustain. The perfect breakfast, theoretically, for most people, is going to be red meat, high fat red meat, and something like nuts or avocado, or something like that. It'd be a great breakfast. Why? Because it's going to uh, promote the way your body manages its energy throughout the day, okay? So it's gonna keep cortisol relatively high. It's not gonna give you an insulin spike first thing in the morning like cereal or even oats or something like that. It keeps Cortisol high and allows you to stay awake and alert during the day. The fats help to keep a nice stable level of blood sugar so you're not getting peaks and troughs and then snacking at 10 a.m. However, if you are super, 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 super lean, you may be able to get away with carbs for breakfast. You know, when I say super lean, I would suggest, you know, 12 to 14% for women, sub 10% for men. Um, and that again is kind of by the by. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can take carbs and they're gonna do you much good because there is still the hormonal effect of that. So for me, the best breakfast is always gonna be red meat, fatty red meat and some extra fats, whether that be nuts or avocado or something like that. Um, but ultimately, it's the thing you can stomach and the thing that you will consistently do. Um, it is never, however, cocoa pops, cornflakes, shit like that. Cal, okay, I recently applied for a PT position at UP London last week. Just wondering how long it takes you guys to follow up uh, if you decide to. Is also, is there any way I can follow it up? Um, great, you can, you can always drop a speculative email uh, to the London gym, but what you have to remember is that we get, per position, probably get between 50 and 150 applicants. Um, so obviously we cannot contact every single one of them and say, sorry, you didn't get it this time. What we will do if you are hopeful, if you get shortlisted, then we contact you. That can take a few weeks, you know, that's it. just because it's not there in a week doesn't mean it's not gonna come. That can take a few weeks, so just can't try and sit and wait. If you don't hear from us, it does mean that you haven't been successful this time, but what it does mean is that you need to assess yourself and say, is there anything I could have done better with my application? If so, yes, great, go away, get it done and apply for the next job or speculatively apply again. Don't give up. Lisa Marie Tolly, does berberine help with fat loss? Potentially, yes, Lisa. Um, it helps very much so with your immune system. It can also help with glucose management. So by that, I mean it helps your body deal with uh, elevated blood sugar, so carbohydrates, etc. So yes, potentially it can, because if your body is using glucose correctly, theoretically you should be insulin sensitive. Your body should, it's gonna be more likely to burn fat and use the fuel that you're putting in it to replenish muscle stores as opposed to fat stores. So yes, potentially it can. And it's also very good for, as I say, digestion, inflammation, immunity, all of these things have a, a knock-on effect to fat loss via a bigger picture. What is she coming in, coming in, coming in? Spot on about the altitude masks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a funny one that. I always find myself giggling, but trying not. I try so hard. So hard not to be that gym dickhead taking a piss at somebody else in the gym, partially because of my job and also because it's not nice. Um, but when I see someone with one of them on in a gym, I just want to get my phone and go, look at this wanker and send it into gym fails or something like that. But I don't, I refrain from it because I'm a good person. <clears throat> Um, I know overall calories affect body fat increase, but is there a carb limit by, whereby once passed, if you will, increase won't be as effective, but if increased, fats will be better? Can, yeah, but it's completely down to the individual. There is no answer I can give you there. Absolutely no answer. That's super, super individual. No worries, Cal. Not a problem. I'm running out of questions already. Look at that. I'm flying today on top form. 
must ration my water though because I've only got one bottle. Uh, here in Marbella it's still about 30 odd degrees so and it's warm at night so I'm still sweating a lot at night. Don't want to run out of water today. Sam, what are your thoughts on yoga? Will it ultimately help me with my weight training? Absolutely yes it will Sam. It's very, very good for the mind, very good for breathing, very good for learning how to control your muscles and good for the joints and general mobility. So yes, absolutely do it. Andy, I'm thinking of joining Live Up. Do it. Um, but I have a glass back and I'm self-employed and cannot be off work. Will the program be okay for someone who has a bad back? Andy, we have plenty of people in there with back issues, namely because it's pretty much everyone who's gonna have some kind of back issue. Now, I will obviously make recommendations and suggest, you know, don't do this, make sure you're doing that. But it ultimately is down to you being careful and being aware. Um, unless you're with a one-to-one -one trainer, it's very, very hard for somebody to turn around and say yes or no to that question. You have to look after yourself. The program is a ready-made program which you will be advised of adjustments, but we're not necessarily gonna take the program back and rewrite it because you have a bad back. You will need to think on your feet a little bit under our guidance. Tristan, supplements everyone could get noticeable differences with. Tristan, short answer to this. Go to the link in my bio um, and go to the Live Up Essentials search Live Up Essentials in the upfitness.com website, and then that will bring up the supplement stack that I put together for Live Up. For me, they are the supplements you need, If the bare minimum supplements you need if you want to see a dis difference with your training and difference with how you feel. I tend to have protein and oats post-workout for breakfast and red meat about an hour later. Is that optimal or better to eat both at the same time? Uh, oats only on training days. Chris, that's absolutely fine. Not a problem, mate, not a problem at all. Proof is in the pudding with you, my friend. You are jacked, shredded, although you have hips like an old man, um, but you've done everything to the absolute nail and it shows. One of the transformations of, in fact, no, the transformation of Lyra so far, so very well done. Amy, three training days on macros calculated from latest UP book. How much slash what proportion should be dropping carbs by on rest days and should I be increasing protein to compensate? Um, Amy, number one, what did it say in the book? I'm not gonna give you answers from the book if you should be there reading it, you lazy bugger. Um, secondly, let's say, for argument's sake, if it was me doing a carb cycle, give me an idea of what carbs you are on on your high carb days. Kaylee, would you recommend optimum nutrition, serious mass for someone trying to put on weight? Kaylee, no, I probably would not recommend mass gainer shakes in general. I'd recommend proper food. The more proper food you can eat, the better you are going to get at gaining uh, weight and good quality weight that stays. If you just start necking shakes and, you know, kind of relevant calories, you're not necessarily gonna get the result out you want. So I would highly recommend trying to eat more proper food and training at the lower end of the reps, rep ranges, you know, five to eight maybe maximum. Donnie, when doing full body workouts, how many exercises do you recommend and what body parts? Um, if you're doing full body, uh, it depends on how many times a week you are training really. I would recommend for most people with average to good recovery, um, maximum 12 sets per week per body part. That's not to say everyone should be doing 12. For a lot of you, nine may be a better bet, but 12 as a maximum is probably about the amount of sets you want to do per week if you're in relatively good shape and you're looking to build muscle and burn fat. There are times when you can go more than that, but you don't necessarily want to stay there for too long. When, uh, sorry, hi Elliot, what's your take on protein bars such as Atkins? Thanks and keep up the good work. Michael, don't do it, is my answer to that. Um, protein bars, one of the things I always try to tell everyone on Live Up Plan, everyone of my clients for the last 12 years, is that you need to be able to define clearly what is a food and what is a product. If it is a product, don't eat it, okay? Eat foods, not products. A protein bar is a product. It is something that has gone through a uh, process in order to be what it is. You do not know what happens during that process. You don't know what is added to it. You don't know what's going on with it. So I would recommend trying to stay away from them where you possibly can and never, ever, ever take something like that versus real food where possible. Boski, how is the live up meal plan set up? Is it a macro target? You basically get told this is what you should be eating. Uh, Boski, it's neither. So to give you a bit of a background, all of those of you who are curious as to how I built the live up program. Now, um, I, how many years ago now? Three years ago, 
built the Live Up program. Back then it was called The Experiment. It then evolved into Six Fit. It has now become Live Up. Um, I sat in a house at Christmas, over the Christmas period, for three weeks. I locked myself in a cottage and I went through every program I'd written for the previous nine years. Um, all of the good ones, all of the bad ones. I went through every bit of notes I had for every part of that program and I decided how to make a program that would work for everyone. I did one male, one female but that removed all of the factors that limited all of those clients for the previous nine years. So, you know, for things like calorie tracking and um, excessive complications on progressions and this, that and the other and removing certain foods and how they had cravings and blah, 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 blah. How I constructed the meal plan was to take away all of those problems. So it's not macro guidelines. Neither is it a meal plan. What I say to you is, right, this is how many meals you're having. In each meal, you need a protein, a fat, a carb, vegetable, blah, blah, blah. And I tell you how much of each one of them you need. You then just pick them. It means that you can pick easily and create your own meal plans effortlessly. Number two, it educates you on what your body needs and how to get it wherever you are. So you can still eat out, you can still go to birthdays, you can still go to functions, and you're not gonna suffer by saying, oh, I can only have lettuce, leaves, and chicken. You can't, you can still eat bread, you can still eat potato, you can still eat pasta. You just need to eat them in the portions that I recommend in the plan. That is essentially how it works. So it's neither macros nor is it a meal plan because both of those are restrictive and unsustainable. The Live Up plan, to put you, give you an idea, Live Up, which was Six Fit, there are men and women who did Six Fit Live Up three and a half years ago, three and a half years ago, who are still to this day doing the same diet and are still absolutely shredded and are still super happy. That's how easy it is when you get the hang of it. So it's neither, but it does work, trust me. So if I should only do five tape reps when training, is that to use heavier weights? It sure is, Kaylee. Heavy weights and slow tempo. No problem, Michael. Chris, I've started developing wrist shaking on push movements. I've had to add wrist straps in. Is that just fatigue as weights get heavier or something else to me that's falling apart? Wouldn't have thought so, uh, Chris. It depends. May be worth just be doing a little bit of grip work, um, potentially. Wrist shaking, it's hard to see. Film it for me. If you can get someone to film it for me next time and then I'll be able to give you an idea of what's going on. What's the best way to strengthen weak wrists? Uh, it's not held me back yet, the online program, but I do struggle with press-ups due to the pain. Um, that's often a compression thing due to, you know, actual compression of the wrist and the bone structure, but also tightness through the forearm. What's best bet if you can, for push-ups, either do them on your fist or a handle if that causes you pain. And with regards to pressing movements, make sure always that if this is the bar, that it's sitting above the wrist. What you see a lot of people do is press with the bar there, okay? Make sure it's sitting in that cavity directly above the line of the wrist. Um, it should help, you know, it's just time. You know, your body gets stronger over time, so give it a while. I tend to have more cravings during the time of the month. Is this fine? Mona, that's very, very normal. Um, your body gets very insulin sensitive at that time of the month for about four days. So your actual demand for carbohydrates goes up. The way to stop those cravings is to plan for the carbohydrate demand and add in probably 50 to 100 grams of extra carbs for those four days. You will not get fat. Your body is using that fuel to regenerate stuff that it's losing, if you know what I mean. So add between 50 and 100 grams of carbohydrates from clean sources over that period, three to four days, and you should find the cravings go away. I have a dip in energy around two to three o'clock in the day. This could be due to not eating enough, but then at night, wide awake and struggle to sleep. They can both be due to not eating enough. So um, what you may need to look for, I don't know if you can search, you can't search on my profile. Cortisol curve. So your body has a natural cortisol curve. In the morning, cortisol is high. In the evening, cortisol is low to let you sleep. And it should taper down during the day. Now, what can happen if you're not eating regularly enough, things like that, intermittent fasting, etc., etc., is your body ends up spiking cortisol and insulin to try and get blood sugar because it, it, it's basically just playing a bit of a game with itself. If you're not eating regularly enough, that can happen. You'll end up with massive bursts of energy in the evening because you're getting a shot of cortisol driving out to try and push insulin down and blah, 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 blah. It's a big complicated process. Your best bet is to make sure you are keeping all of your carbs until the evening, that you are tapering your food portions down towards the end of the day, eat as regularly as you can, and you may find that helps. I am Tijo, loved Live Up. 
This is my last week hoping to go on specialization. I deadlifts incorporated anywhere in specialization. I've missed them. Um, on some of them, they are I am TO, but you can always add them in. Obviously, when you're at the stage of week 12, you're going to be relatively advanced in your ability to lift. So you can, by all means, add a little deadlift session in once a week. It's not an issue at all. Coming to the end of my 12 week transformation at UP Cheshire, what tips and advice can you give me to sustain the progress that I've made? Gutted I missed you a couple of weeks ago, by the way. Uh, it's okay, I'm back and forth all of the time, so you will see me there. Um, first of all, don't suddenly slip off the wagon. Don't suddenly binge. Speak to your trainer about a reverse diet, okay? So the key is that wherever you are now, let's say you are tracking your calories, wherever you are now, it's important not to suddenly go back to where you were to start with. You need to gradually taper your calories up. What I recommend is tapering them up 100 a week till you find a maintenance point. That maintenance point will be <laughs> about where you start to soften up. You see yourself start to soften. When you get to that point, take your calories back, let's say 100, and just stay there for a few days, maybe a week. Then you can start trying to add up again. It's about gradually returning to a calorie maintenance because if you suddenly binge and you go back to normal, you're getting fat. So just be careful with that. Jenny Stokes, hi, Lorraine, you're welcome. Saffron White, interested in liver, but worried it won't work as I have autoimmune disease and metabolism is stuck since previous medications which cause gain. Cannot lose weight no matter what, it's very frustrating. Uh, Saffron, okay, first of all, the amount of people who tell me they cannot lose weight no matter what and I've then made them lose weight, I would suggest it's worth a try. Um, secondly, if you do have major, major, major issues, you can always upgrade to one-to-one -one where we can deal with that far better. Um, so don't just throw in the towel before you've even started. Kaylee, thanks Elliot, much appreciated. May have to invest in an online training program. You totally should, Kaylee. You can either invest in our one-to-one -one online training or live up. You can hit the link in the bio. You can go and check that out. Either way, it will be super worth it. And you get to spend more kind of cyber time with me, which is joyous, right? Hello, Jenny Stokes, Lisa. Thanks, on hip extensions, what's the recommended minimum weight? I've been doing 20 kilos, but I'm sure I read a post where it should be 45. I assume you mean hip thrusts there, Lisa. Um, for the majority of females, if you have been training for any more than, let's say, three months, you should probably be closer to about 100 kilos by now, 80 to 100 kilos. And to put it in perspective, I have 50 to 60 year old clients um, doing hip thrusts with well over 120 kilos. So big, heavy movements, have the confidence to do them, just gradually take it up steadily. Don't don't train like a pussy on your glute movements, otherwise you're never going to have a decent bump. Hello, why do you recommend glute bridges on a bench instead of a floor? Um, for me personally, range of motion. If you actually go to my personal profile, Elliot Upton, you can see a video I did explaining exactly why I prefer them. Um, for me, it's range of motion, it's the mechanics and lever, it's the ankle position, and it's the ability for the uh, client to actually squeeze and maintain the right position throughout the movement. Um, I'm not a massive fan of uh, glute bridges, which is the floor-based version, because of bar movement and ankle position and the way they are likely to recruit the quads, etc, etc, etc. As a type 2 diabetic, I try to limit carbs. What do you recommend for diabetic individuals? Um, limiting carbs, basically. Limiting carbs and regular exercise uh, would be good. You might want to, is there anything more specific you want to know there? Oh, I've run out of questions again, I'll tell you what. So, as many of you know, I, uh, I ripped my hamstring. I've had riddled with injuries for years now, it's getting silly. Um, but most recently I did a training program, an online training program, got myself an online coach with one of the best strength training coaches on the planet, um, who basically ended up injuring every part of my body. My neck was ruined, my right shoulder was ruined, both my wrists were ruined, uh, my glutes were ruined, and I eventually ended up with a major tear in my hamstring, where the back of my leg was black with internal bleeding and bruising for about eight weeks. Anyway, long story short, did a lot of rehab work. I've got everything kind of settled down, started doing some uh, accommodating resistance work on my hamstrings, some of which you will be able to see on my profile if you want to go and check out how I did that. Um, and finally, I've managed to start squatting again very, very light. We're only doing 100 kilos for fives, but crikey, how tight my hips get afterwards now. So I kind of need a constant, just little Thai lady walking all over my butt cheeks or something. 
Best way to progressively overload arm training without it taking too much time. Um, progressively overload in the same way as you would anything else, add a kilo. One of the things I really like with arm training, and I struggle with my arms, you know, my arms are tiny, especially in comparison to my big, thick, genetically barrelly core, um, is tempo, 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 tempo. Don't train your arms fast. If you are training your arms, you're like, bang, bang. They are not growing unless you're really, really lucky super slow eccentrics and squeeze them like crazy, then you are gonna get far more out of them. Hi, I'm Tico, strange question. My knees always seem to be clicking now, mainly during lunges and squats. It's not painful, but I do wonder what it could be. Could just be a bit of tightness, um, so make sure you're foam rolling your quads thoroughly, internal side and external side and at top front side. Roll them regularly, make sure you're taking care of yourself. You know, one of the things you have to remember with regular exercise is that the muscles are starting to tighten up. Now this is a good thing because it gives joint stability. It makes those joints like scaffolding, it holds everything in place. But sometimes it can get a bit too tight, so you do still have to take care of them, you have to stretch regularly and keep your body rolling. And also make sure you're taking your fish oil supplements, etc. keeping plenty of fluid in your body, loads and loads of water to make sure you're constantly lubed up. Hey. Right, do you do the online, one-to-one uh, -one online coaching or do you get allocated to someone? And um, Saffron, what will happen is when you sign up, I personally get your allocation, then I will pick a trainer that I believe is best for you based on uh, their experience, your needs, and uh, also location, just in case you need some face time with that client, or sorry, with that trainer. Are there more UP books coming out shortly? And if so, what topics are they on? There sure are, Lisa, we have potentially Potentially, this is not a guarantee, but certainly potentially, we have a female-specific training book coming out. We have a vegan-specific book coming out, and we have a supplements book all coming out. These are theoretically going to be relatively soon, maybe in the next year to year and a half. Um, these will be the next three on their way to you to kind of complete that, that perfect little book collection you're going to have from UP. Tristan, best muscle groups to train together, and if so, so what should a training week look like? Um, for me, Tristan, I prefer full body. Um, I like training my entire body in one session because it has the greatest metabolic effect and it works with my personal recovery factors, if that's the case. I train two to four uh, sets per muscle group, per session, and I train that three times a week. So full body, three times a week. Actually rolling as you list, and I like that multitasking, functional multitasking as well. When is the third GP book out? As I say, Stu, for it's coming. It's on its way, but I'm not going to give you a date. You're just going to have to wait. You can subscribe uh, to the mailing list via upfitness.com, or you can hit post notifications in the bio, and that will allow you to see before anybody else, and of course, get your early bird orders in. Alex Pindar, I've recently recovered from a steroid injection, having plantar fasciitis. Is there any exercise you can recommend to ease back into training? Alex Pindar, it depends kind of on the spe specifics of your condition. Now, plantar fasciitis is very, very, very common. Um, lots of tension through the feet, plantar fascia. You know, rolling it out is often a good one, but you kind of need to you kind of need to be relatively specific to where your issues are. So, very hard for me to say. Obviously, you're not going to be restricted on uh, any upper body stuff. So by all means do that. I wouldn't necessarily for now do any vertically loaded stuff. So, you know, if you've got problems with your feet, etc., don't put a barbell on your back. What you want to be doing, if you're going to load anything after time, obviously do it with your body weight to start with, but if you're going to load anything, do it with dumbbells or something you can drop easily if you get into trouble. That would be my only real, you know, kind of semi-educated guess on what you've asked there. Have you got any advice to prevent ego lifting? Yes, don't bring your ego into the gym. Makes you look like a twat. It's not gonna get you any results and it's probably gonna end up with you injured. There's nothing more to say on it than that, you know? Ego lifting's ego lifting, it's for morons. If I did one-to-one -one online in the future, is it possible to get allocated with you or are you too busy these days for one-to-one? -one? Chris, it's not about me being too busy, mate. I love my job, as, as you know. Um, it's just something that within my enormous list of jobs right now, looking after individual clients isn't the best way to use my time. Um, so you wouldn't get allocated to me. However, as I say, the allocations do come through to me. So I would match you up with someone that I know is best for you. And obviously we have a, a past relationship with uh, Live Up, so I'll know exactly where to send you. With UP Live Women, is it general advice or is it any personalized advice? George, or Georgie, I assume. Um, the whole thing, it's a full training program. It tells you exactly what to train, how to train, and when to train. 
It's a full nutrition program. It tells you exactly what to eat, how much to eat, and roughly when to eat. With regards to the personalized advice, there is the whole program is run via an online forum. I run it personally. I'm in there every single day, every single morning, every single night, and every spare minute I get, seven days a week, I'm in that forum trying to make sure everybody is looked after. Now, with regards to personalization, it is personalized to a, an extent. However, it is not one-to-one. -one. The program is not built specifically for you. It is not going to be adjusted. You know, we're not gonna take it back and then take three exercises out and put three more in and blah, blah, blah. What I may say, if you turn around to me and say, I can't do this exercise because I'll say, okay, no problem, try this exercise. That's the kind of personalization. With regards to the diet, you check in with me every single week and I may make mild, training uh, and dietary adjustments there. And that could be something like, right, this week I want you to take away X amount of fats and I want you to do one extra set on this exercise, something like that. So it's customized, but it's not me taking programs backwards and forwards to, uh, to dial them in for you. Fruit versus complex carbs. What do you recommend for insulin resistance, salt or sensitivity? Um, fruit is not going to be insulinogenic in the same way that carbohydrates are. Um, so it's, it's processed in a slightly different way, so they're kind of not in the same area. If you have insulin sensitivities, obviously, or if you're not insulin sensitive, then you're going to have to limit your carbs to the right times. Um, you're also going to have to be making sure you're exercising weight training properly and regularly. But with regards to uh, fruit and carbs, I personally do not class fruit as a carb. Fruit's a fruit, carb's a carb. Stu Firm, my physio says I have weak lower traps. He recommends kettlebell, uh, arm bars, do you have any better exercises? For me, one of the best ones I really, really like is just a trap three raise. So on a 45 degree bench with a dumbbell, thumb facing up, or you may not be able to use a dumbbell for thumb facing up. You start off, if you imagine I'm on a uh, 45 degree bench now, I retract my shoulder, okay? So I retract my shoulder, I then lift my arm out at 45 degrees. That looks like from behind, if you can see me. I retract my shoulder, and I lift my arm out at 45 degrees. That on a bench is gonna fire up your lower traps because it pulls your shoulder blade down into the center of your back. That's something I'm a massive, massive fan of for getting your lower traps working. That's my rice versus brown short grain rice. Really doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. You're welcome, Georgie. Republica, Republica, any plans on opening a location in the valley? I live in Sherman Oaks and would love to do your program. Driving into Brentwood is a killer. Um, there may well be Republica, Republica. We are obviously expanding across America. Uh, that is our major kind of plan at the moment. We just can't find trainers fast enough to uh, to stock the gyms. Obviously, we don't want to give, down a, give the USA a watered down product. So we are limited by the speed at which we can take on high quality trainers. Um, but there may well be coming in the future somewhere. I know he's got his eyes on a few other places in the LA area so by all means they may well be popping up. You're welcome chum, not a problem. Speaking of chum, <laughs> I watched Jason Statham's uh, movie the other day, Silly O'Clock, I just had to shut my brain down after a ridiculous day and watched his new uh, movie Meg about finding the Megalodon. You know I like Jason Statham but crikey it's a high budget movie, but it wasn't a good one. <laughs> Chum. It reminded me of that. Jason Statham, if you watch this or you watch it on YouTube, I'm a massive fan, man, but that was quite bad. It was like Sharknado and all that stuff. What's your favourite terrible movie? You know that one that's so, 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 so shit that you kind of like it because it's entertaining? Give me some suggestions. I want to know what, what's going on in your brains out there. Someone's clearly going to come up with like human centipede or something weird on it. Like, oh, I really like that one. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Let's have them. There we go. Conair. Great call, Stufa. Conair. I tell you what, how in good a shape is Nicolas Cajun now? I remember when I was a kid, didn't want his hair. I did not want that balding mullet. But my God, did I want to be built like him. He is jacked in that. What a physique the guy's got. What a physique. Hot tub time machine. Good call, it's terrible, but it's kind of, but it, I suppose at least the thing is with hot tub time machine is it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be kind of shit and bad, but you know, that like Con Air is supposed to be awesome, but it's kind of also super cheesy. I mean, that, that mullet, that Nicolas Cage mullet, wow, brilliant. But he's a badass, isn't it? He? He's a total badass. 
and he's in sick shape. What else have we got? Shaun of the Dead, again, do you know, I say that, but I really like that. That's not like a bad film that's good, that's just a shit hot film. I really like those two. Sean, is it Sean Pegg? It is Sean Pegg, isn't it? He's phenomenal, brilliant, brilliant guy, as is the other dude whose name slips my brain. High bar versus low bar, do you think it makes much difference or just individual preference? Uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna make, the, uh, it's going to make a difference to the right person. So within that, there is an element of individual preference, but there is an element of individual mechanics. So yes, for some people, it could be very beneficial. For other people, not so much. Now, I've seen people switch to a low bar squat and it's just made the squat horrible. Yes, it may have given them a little bit of extra kind of, well, a bit of leverage, maybe strength, but it just, it looks damaging, it looks disgusting, it looks nasty. So I'm not a fan. For me, it's down to individuality, um, individual mechanics or individual preference. Some people I would say favour a low bar squat, other people do not. The Room. The Room, I don't think I've seen The Room. I'll actually, I'll Google that one, I'll see how terribly bad it is. The Room. I remember seeing Hostel and never wanting to go to Eastern Europe after seeing that when I was younger. Already using Amplify, but I feel like I suffer early muscle fatigue. Is it worth trying focus? Um, Beverly, that's not likely to be the reason for fatigue. It could be the fact that you may be malnourished. So I'd suggest eating a bit more food. Um, if you're suffering fatigue super, super quickly, it could be the fact you just don't have enough fuel in you. How do I get rid of bingo wings and get defined triceps? Um, you make sure you are dieting correctly and consistently in order to get down there. Um, and then, excuse me, you train your triceps with a combination of compound and isolation movements. Two good compound movements for you would be a tricep skull crusher with a bar over your head lying on your back and a close grip triceps bench press. If you can, it would be even better if you can do it semi-supinated. Um, and then some isolation exercises, keep it simple, cable push downs and cable overhead extension. That gives you every point of flexion, gives you four exercises to work with and make sure your diet is nailed and you should be able to help that. Georgie, another question. You can have as many questions as you like. I have a grade two ATFL tear. Um, what a good impact, low impact cardio exercise do so don't lose fitness during recovery. It depends what you've got access to, Georgie. Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna want to uh, be a bit careful. So try things like battling ropes. Battling ropes are amazing. You may be able to get if you can get hold of a ski erg. Um, ski ergs are good. Again, upper body cardio, so you shouldn't be having any issue there. Really, really good. Really, really intense, and both can essentially be done without causing any uh, impact at all on the lower body. What happens in the first 12 weeks on uh, Live Up? What happens in the first 12 weeks? Your life changes, that's what happens. The best time to have carbs while maintaining optimum fat loss post-workout and before bed, Shireen. Any tips for a female late 50s with Hashimoto's? Weight trains two times a week, walks two to three miles per week, or two miles three times per week. Can't seem to lose weight, no synthetic meds, hormone levels treated homeopathically. Trish, what I would recommend is that you train, weight train slightly more um, and walk slightly less. What you're doing there is giving your body a reason to slow its metabolism down, um, which obviously you do not want. By weight training slightly more and trying to build a little bit of muscle, you're giving your body a reason to elevate its metabolism, giving it the signals it needs to speed that up. So that would be your first port of call. Will, uh, how would the main principles of nutrition change if training purely for hypertrophy versus overall conditioning? If by conditioning you mean fat loss, um, it would essentially be calories, basically calories and carbs. For me, potentially protein, but depends on what your baseline is. How much cardio should you schedule into your week? As much as you need to, to stay lean. I would suggest for most people, if you're doing formal cardio, doing two 45 minute sessions per week is good enough. If not that, then do steps, step goal. You know, let's say aim for most females should be aiming for between 12, five to 15,000 steps a day. Most males between 10,000 and 12 and a half. The reason females would do more is because their legs are a lot shorter. Why on the Ultimate Body Transformation Program plan from Nick Mitchell, you recommend on the fatless port complex carbs after training before bed instead of two to three pieces of fruit? 
Um, again, because fruit is not insulinogenic, so it is not going to uh, open up the muscle cells to draw in carbohydrates or to draw in glucose. So um, that would be my guess, but Nick wrote that book, not me, so you would have to ask him. <clears throat> there may be an explanation in there, if you had a look. Check it out. Check it out. What did I just sing in? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Don't even know what that was. I know, I know it. Well, I know what it was, but I can't remember where it's from. I wonder where I've heard that. Uh, magnesium malate or magnesium glyconate isn't going to make the vastest amount of difference. It's just basically how it's absorbed. Potentially, if you're going to pick it, do you know what? I'm not going to suggest picking one or the other. It's each one of them, as long as it's a high quality. Um, supplier, it should be absorbed relatively equally. They may have a marginally different effect, but when it comes down to those super details, I wouldn't be able to give you the information without opening a uh, book right now. Sorry, I meant what happens after the first 12 weeks? Can you change to a more muscle building plan? Uh, Bowski, yeah, so what we do after the first 12 weeks, you can either go back to the beginning if you feel like you've got more fat to lose, but bear in mind you will be building muscle throughout. Um, and if you get to the end of the 12 weeks, we have um, ongoing phases, which are specialization phases. So these are workouts where you can basically um, say, right, I want to work on my back or I want to work on my shoulders, or I want to do this. So what we then do is create programs for you that are still full body, so they still train everything, but they specialize in a particular area. So you can get your back thicker and wider, or you know, this kind of thing. Hawaii Five-0. That was terrible. That was terrible. Wasn't that when maybe you wore a pastel, pastel jacket? He used to take his, uh, take his sleeves up like that. Brilliant, brilliant. Come on folks, keep them coming. We're ticking by, I don't know. Uh, my guess would be we've probably got about 10 minutes left before Instagram kicks me off. My brain doesn't seem to have any concept of time at the moment. It's exhausted, it is tired, it's ready to sleep. Where are you all? I'd love to know, put your location. I wanna know where you all are at the moment. I'd like to see who I'm talking to and where from. Farhad, my right knee swells up after squatting and I feel pain on the outside of my knee. It also happens to me after playing football. Is there anything I can do to prevent this? Farhad, it sounds to me like you may have a tendon issue there. Um, you, before it gets any worse, I would recommend seeing a specialist. Go to someone who can actually assess you. Go and find a local good physio with a good reputation. Um, in the meantime, I would recommend, again, foam rolling or getting massage on the outer side of your leg, especially if you're playing high impact sports, things like football, your vastus lateralis, which is the outer portion of your quad is likely to be very, very tight. Um, so get that rolled out and it should rebalance the patella, the pull on the patella and may help, but go and see a specialist sooner rather than later. We've got Rosa from Leicester. I average 15,000 steps a day. We'll need to do extra when I start the bar. No, that's more than enough, Andy. Berlin, Germany, awesome. I'm from Bradford, the sphincter of the universe. Ah, well, I've not heard that actually, the sphincter of the universe. Saying that, I've driven through Bradford once and I remember seeing signs. I, I don't know which part of Bradford, but I saw, I, I, it was basically local authority signs saying, uh, you may want to lock your doors in Bradford. I was like, okay, I'm in a great place. Lisa Marie Tolly, Manchester, my second favorite city in the UK. Ash Truman, Cornwall, not far from where I grew up in Devon. Hannah, Chalfont, Buckinghamshire. Nice. What do you think about reverse diet to gain muscle? Um, for me, reverse diet is usually what I would do if I've dieted someone down to get super lean. Gaining muscle, again, you're gonna wanna get your calories up as high as possible to gain muscle, so yes, it can be effective. Lorraine, Stoke on Trent, of course, Stoke on Trent. Caveman Training, Nat, another one from Cornwall. Derbyshire, Andy. Sam, Wirral, one of my best mates is from Wirral. Hampshire, Madam. Alexa, any advice for sticking to a calorie deficit when traveling for work? Lots of meals out, um, what are airports? Alexa, so I probably travel in the last, let's say, I travel a lot, an awful lot. Um, I've probably done 200,000 miles this year in flights at least. Um, so it's just about choosing to make the right choices. There is no airport in the world that does not cater for a diet. 
There is no hotel in the world that doesn't cater for a diet. There is no restaurant in the world that doesn't cater for a diet if you choose to stick on your diet. My advice is understand why you're doing it and try to think ahead. You know, if you go to my YouTube, Elliot Upton, that's Elliot spelled with two L's and two T's, You'll see a little playlist that I put together, which is just about training on holiday and training while you're traveling and how to diet while you're traveling. And I, in the first video in that playlist, I give you a breakdown of how I do it and how I um, plan ahead. And um, that's the key to it. So it's not impossible, but it is difficult. Abu Dhabi, I might be coming out for the Grand Prix to Abu Dhabi. We'll see. It's gonna be cool. I bet it's absolutely manic there, isn't it though, Wayne? Oh man, Northwest Lancashire, sweet. Southampton Airport, delayed on my way back to Manchester. Always delayed. Who are you flying with? Let's name and shame. Reading, Mozilla, London, Sunny Hull. I was in Hull last week as well. Alex Pinder drove through Hull to go to my grandfather's funeral. It wasn't sunny at all, it was pissing it down. Stourbridge, West Midlands. Ever tried cricket protein? I actually have Stufa. I've got a friend here who uh, set up a, an insect protein um, company. It flopped quite rapidly, um, but I did try it, it was interesting. Jackie, Manchester, of course. Do I advocate drop sets? What is the best way to do this? By how much weight should you decrease? Um, Shireen, I do for advanced lifters, potentially someone who I know is structurally very strong and I know is gonna perform them correctly. For 95% of the general population, no, I do not suggest drop sets. Um, if you were to do a drop set, what I would recommend is that when you get to technical failure on a set, so let's say, for instance, you are doing a squat. When your form starts to go and it becomes dangerous, that is the end of your set. It's not grinding out three reps terribly. The end of your set is where your form drops. Okay, so we get to that point. What I would then recommend you do is you remove about 20% of the weight. Okay, 20% and you wait about 10 seconds. Once you've done that, you go in, you do another set to technical failure yet again. Go back in, another 20% of the weight should be adequate. You go in, do it again. I like usually two drops and of about 20% each but again, never losing technical perfection. What was your motivation to start training and what kept you going initially? Um, Lisa, genuinely, and uh, some of you may laugh at this, my train, um, sorry, my, my motivation to start training was girls. Um, so in my history, I was very, very fat my whole life. I was huge. To, to put it in perspective, um, I actually burnt all of the photos of me uh, as a teenager um, between, I guess, probably about eight and maybe 20, you won't see any photos of me in any family albums that I'm aware of um, because I went and found them and burnt them all because I hated myself. Um, so I was very, very fat. The one photo that did seem to survive was from my father, um, who I didn't see very often, and he had a photo of us at Christmas. And I'm sitting there next to him, um, 15 years old, and I'm about 122, 123 kilos. Now I got bigger than that. I got bigger and bigger and bigger. So I was very, very, um, very, very overweight my whole life. Then I got to my late teens, and I was the guy that was cleaning up the mess, basically. It's the best way to put it. So all of my friends who were having fun and doing this with girls and doing that with girls and doing all the things that teenage boys do with girls, they were doing these to the, all of these girls, then upsetting these girls, and then I was the one that was trying to help the girls be happy and fixing things. I've always been a fixer my whole life. No matter what it is, I try to fix it. It's, been, it's in my nature that whether it's a thing, whether it's a person, it's my biggest curse. Um, but that was me. And then I remember eventually I got to my late teens and it had been going on for years and years and years. And I said, do you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't be the person to carry everybody else's baggage and never have any of the fun or the happiness or the joy or anything like this myself. And that was it for me. I said, do you know what? I want to, I want to kiss a girl. I want to do all of these things that my mates are doing. So I was like, fuck it. Got in the gym uh, and I did it stupidly. This is one thing I might add. I did it very, very stupidly. I just outworked myself. Um, <coughs> I dropped out all of my carbohydrates for the best part of a year and a half. Um, and I trained three times a day and I went from a hundred and I would guess somewhere around 120 kilo mark, 120, 125 kilos down to 67 kilos. Um, so that was me running probably the best part of 10 to 20 miles a day. That was me training in the morning. That was me training at lunchtime. That was me training in the evening um, and just grafting and grafting and grafting and grafting and grafting. Now I got a lot of body fat off, but the knock-on effect to that in my later life. Obviously, I then educated myself um, over the coming years, but from the age of 20 to now, 31, well, 19, 20, 31, I did a lot of reading, I studied, obviously qualified as a PT, etc. The knock-on effects to my health now, the problems I have with my health now because of, A, 
the fact that I was fat my whole life and B, how I lost weight and how extremely I pushed myself to lose weight has left me with um, deep, deep biological scars for doing so. And it made, means I struggle with my weight to this day. So that also keeps me motivated, you know? I know that if I drop the ball, I get very, very fat very, very quickly and I lose a lot of muscle very, very quickly. So I'm in a constant battle with my weight. So to a degree, that is my motivation. Um, my motivation to drop weight was my, my kind of feelings, my hatred for myself and my, my need for, I guess, attention, just like all of us, um, from girls. And then what keeps me there is the fact that I don't really want to get fat or ever feel that way again. Um, so I have to move forwards. Morning training versus evening training. Train whenever you feel best, Hayley. Um, however, if there is one to pick, I would say morning, because once it's done, it's done. You're not gonna come home from work tired and then ditch the gym. Uh, Jen Renz, you're a hottie now though. Cheers, Jen Renz. <laughs> Shepherd's pie lasagna. Also, is a vascular shunting. I think that's what it's called effective. Yes, it absolutely is. PHA, peripheral heart action. Vascular shunting, which is essentially trying to push blood from the front to the back or from the top to the bottom of the body. Basically doing supersets that involve opposing muscles. Yes, it's very, very effective, especially doing it in a, an upper body, lower body fashion. Um, and shepherd's pie or lasagna. Oh, I'd have to say lasagna. I'm gonna say lasagna. For me, I like really super strong flavors, super strong flavors. If it's relatively mild in flavor, I usually can't taste it. Um, so I like really, really strong, hard flavors. So for me, it'd be a lasagna. Kaylee, fix me, join Live Up and I'll do my best. Hey, do you have any advice on supplements to help with sleep? Thank you, yes. Number one, Nicola Buta, oh yeah, that'll be the one. Um, magnesium is the number one thing you need to be taking. I would suggest 250 milligrams of magnesium per night, about half an hour before you go to bed. That would be the first supplement that you should try. You don't want to take on loads and loads and loads of supplements that may be an unnecessary expense if you only need the one. Magnesium is gonna to help to calm your nervous system down. It's gonna to help to put you in a very restful sleep. But you also need to make sure, number one, you are not looking at your phone in bed. Number one, you are not watching TV in bed. Number two, and three, rather, blah, blah, blah. Um, that you make sure all of these devices are off and out of your sight within an hour of you going to sleep. Otherwise, you're really, really gonna struggle. Lorraine, I have a 17 year old son, slightly overweight, finally got him to train at his own pace and he's not very confident, can't wait for him to see changes in himself. He's reading my UB books. It just takes time and one of the things you have to remember with kids, especially teenagers and especially much more so now in the world that we're in because back then, you know, when I was trying to lose weight, social media was in its infancy. You know, I didn't even get onto social media until I was 24 maybe. So I avoided it like the plague because it was everything I hated about humans. Um, but now the pressure is so much higher and the lies are so much more profound. What these kids and what we see and what you see, what I see on social media, it's just a massive, massive cauldron of bullshit and lies. So to young impressionable kids who have self-confidence issues, it's that much worse. Um, so the key is just to be supportive, let them go at their own pace as you are, and always make sure whatever they're doing they enjoy, because if they enjoy it, they will continually do it and they'll be consistent in it, and that after all is key. When trying to follow low carbs, days I sometimes struggle. Um, why? Just wow, listening to your story. Yeah, my story is easy, it could be a lot worse. I know spot reducing fat doesn't work, but what are your tips for losing fat around stomach, hips for women? Um, lose fat everywhere would be number one, so calorie control and making sure that you're dieting correctly. Secondly, estrogen control, because female pattern fat deposits such as hips, stomach, um, arms, bum, that is usually because of estrogenic toxicity. So by getting control of your uh, xenoestrogen levels, making sure your liver is supported, and making sure that you're not taking in too many toxins, you can actually start to reduce fat in those stubborn areas quite easily. And the, the best way to do that essentially is to limit what chemicals you put in or on your body, firstly. Number two, taking lots of green vegetables, lots of dark green vegetables, because it helps to cleanse that stuff out of the tissues. And number three, support your liver with plenty of fluids, lemon water, etc. is really gonna help. You can also, if you want an extra little add-in, you can hit the link in my personal bio, uh, go to Elliot Upton, hit the link in my bio and search Estro Support, E-S-T-R-O Support, and that will give you an estrogen support supplement that we have, and you take one of them per day, that will also help to cleanse your body of uh, harmful estrogens, which could be causing that fat storage. When following low carb days, I sometimes struggle to hit my calories for the day. Ideas for healthy snacks. 
Um, it depends on what you're struggling to hit. If it's particular, particularly on card days, um, as in you're going over, I would assume there. Hard to say, hard to say, because it depends how many you go over. Healthy snacks would usually be, you know, things like nuts, things like fruit, things like vegetables, um, or variations thereof. Depends on how creative you are, you can make stuff out of that. But it depends how far you are over or how low your calories are. Was your friend's company that sold insect protein called Eat Grub? No, I don't believe it was, Stu, for I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. Uh, I'm planning to compete next year in April and would like to get the best shape of my life. Any tips on how many weeks prep I should go for before show day? Um, Rosa, I'm going to say no on this one. Give yourself as much time as possible. I am famously known for absolutely hating the world of competing, uh, fitness, prep, bikini, etc. Because it's one of the most physically and psychologically damaging industries out there. It's disgusting, it's immoral. There are many, many things that I hate about it, so I'm not gonna give you too much advice on it. But I will say, just for your own protection, is number one, think very, very carefully about doing it. Number two, keep your wits about you. And number three, give yourself as much time as possible to get down there, don't rush into it at the end. Shireen, I'm 32, 60 kilos, body fat 19%. I'm training four times a week, three of which is strength. Protein about 130 grams, but struggling to see a change. What am I doing wrong? Shireen, drop your protein down to 100 grams. Social media is a blessing and a curse. I love your training vids. They are one of, one, are one of the social media blessings. This is the interesting and kind of ironic thing, Richie Roo, is that most of my annoyance with the human race comes from social media, but I also know that it's the whole reason I have a job. It's the whole reason I get to communicate with you guys. And I also know that as small as my reach is, that I can change, I can't change the world, but I can change somebody's world. And as I say, I'm a fixer. So if a little bit of useful content I can put out can help somebody and it can help you have your moment and suddenly think, do you know what? I really like this training stuff. I'm gonna make myself healthy, I'm gonna do this. Then that's good for me, you know? It kind of overrides the fact, you know, the other side of it that I don't like of social media, but. What are your thoughts on Lodo? Kath uses them loads. I believe this is a bread that Kath told me about, but I don't know enough about it to be able to give you an opinion, unfortunately. How the ideal PT should look like and represent himself in the fitness industry. I don't believe there's an ideal way that a PT should look. You know, everyone is from different backgrounds. Like as you know, say some some PTs are athletes and are going to look amazing whilst eating 15 Krispy Kreme donuts and six bowls of pasta every single day. Other people are going to diet like they're on prep day after day after day after day after day, and they're still going to struggle to maintain weight because maybe they've had a history of obesity, etc., etc. Everyone else has their own story. They have their own path that they have walked down, and I think it's really important for you to understand that and for everyone to understand that the PT industry is full of a very, very diverse number of people. However, that PT should, at the very least, irrelevant of what they look like, take care of themselves and present, present themselves well. They should train, they should be strong, they should know how to train, but first and foremost, above everything, they should be able to prove to you that they can get results. That they can get results out of many, many different types of people, not just physique competitors, not just bikini models, that they can get results out of old people, young people, sick people, injured people, wealthy people, poor people, you name it. Whatever's going on, they should be able to show you that they can get results out of everybody. That's the main thing. How they represent themselves, they should have integrity, they should be honest, and they should deliver their sessions like they care about your client. Now, one of the things that UP are known for, and I quote, is we care about our clients' results often more than the client cares themselves. And that's the key, that's how we operate. So if someone can kind of mimic that, then maybe they can get something out of it. Thoughts on DHEA? Maybe a subject for a bigger video because a lot of you are now asking this, so I might make a note of that later. Stufa, do me a favor um, and just send to my personal profile, Elliot Upton, just send me a direct message, DHEA, and I'll remember to do a video on that because loads of you keep asking. Also, will this be on YouTube? I'm subscribed to your channel. Yes, it will, Farhad. I've got the other one to upload um, from the hotel last week. I've only just managed to get a new adapter for my Mac because it hasn't been working. I uploaded that before I did this live feed. I will then edit that and put that up to YouTube after I have finished this live feed. So that should be live by tomorrow morning, depending on upload speed. Then I will try to get this one on there tomorrow so it's up ready to watch through the week. I'm in a budget gym at the moment, but would you like to find out my BMI to start? What would you suggest? Uh, Boski, you don't need to know anything about your BMI. Your BMI is absolutely ridiculous and completely ir irrelevant. Don't worry about it at all. If you want to know where you are now, take photos. Have someone take photos of you in your underwear. And then every single week going forwards, make sure you take photos in the same light, same time, and that will track your progress better than any other tool. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Your knowledge is immense. No, thank you, Shireen. Thank you for showing up. 
Um, I have got one minute and 20 seconds remaining, so we're gonna go quick fire. On UP Live, is there a way to access content that you don't have if you don't have Facebook? Um, unfortunately not, it is a Facebook-based forum. Eventually, it all will all be hosted in an app, but that is in development, and that's probably gonna take six months to a year by the time it's all done, so right now it is on Facebook. I would suggest, what I suggest to a lot of people who don't have Facebook is to set up a dummy account. If you set up a dummy account, you can then uh, just, you know, you don't have to put any personal details in, but that gives you access to the forum and then you can then watch. All right, just less than one minute, guys. Please fire these questions at me as fast as you possibly can and I will answer them. We've got 50 seconds, we'll do a countdown. Ah, my mouth is so dry. Fine, perfect. Well, I've got to slave myself from nine to five tomorrow, so I'm off to bed. Good night, thank you. Same, same, same. Doing consistent 16 hour days at the moment and I'm rather tired. Good luck, man. Omega-3, yes, no, absolutely omega-3. Yes, 100%, I would recommend taking omega-3 for most people between five and 10 grams per day every single day. Ideally, if you can, in a pure oil form, but make sure it's scented with lemon, otherwise you're gonna burp and taste like a fishmonger. Are you doing another muscle building vid with other trainers again? Yes, I will, Boski, eventually when I get back to London. What baseline of fat loss calories would you recommend for 112 pound woman? If you want to know that, you will have to get onto our one-to-one -one personal training. I'm not here for that kind of advice. When's the next UP gym going to be? It's going to be somewhere potentially in the UK. This is me, 321 and I'm out. Thank you for joining me, I'll see you soon. And there we go, YouTube. That was the live feed. Plenty of good content and questions there. Um, if you have any questions that I have not answered right here and now, do feel free to put them in the comments box below and I will, of course, give you the answers either in video form or I will answer them in the text form. Um, you can check out the link down there that will take you to our supplements. You can check out the Live Up plan, which I'll put the link to in the description box. Um, everything else we've spoken about in this video is gonna be down there in that description box. So do feel free to click it. If you like this video, you like what you've seen, please come and join us so you can speak to me face to face. I would love to you face to face, face to screen, I guess. Um, I would love to get to know you, I'd love to meet you, I'd love to answer your questions personally. If not, please like, comment, share, get this out there to the world and let us know what you think. Until next week, I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.